Having installed the Traxxas Widemax kit on the fantastic Traxxas Max, I was left a little underwhelmed by the stock plastic telescopic extending drive shafts, considering they have been stretched to accommodate the longer suspension arms. To get that strength back and add a ton more, we need to install these Traxxas Steel CV drive shafts. Although I have no doubt the stock plastic telescopic drive shafts would hold up perfectly well, even with 4S power with the stock truck, considering the Widemax kit elongates them further, in effect making them weaker, in order to keep strength up as high as possible we need to install some steel drive shafts. Personally I still think these should have been included with the truck as standard, but nevertheless here we have a set of Traxxas Constant Velocity steel drive shafts. Available in stock length as well as the larger Widemax compatible version I have here, the kit comes complete with the drive shafts, bearings and hardware. Everything you need to get the set installed. Well, almost everything. These heavy duty shafts are used in conjunction with aluminum 17mm wheel hubs, part number 8654, as well as a set of wheel nuts, part number 7758. So to install the complete set you'll need these too. Fortunately I did have a spare set available, but again surely Traxxas should have included these with the drive shaft kit, especially considering the cost. Either way, time to get these installed. So we'll begin by removing the body as well as all four wheels from each corner of the truck. With the wheels removed we'll start on the front of the truck and proceed to remove the single screw holding the steering link to the front steering hub, along with the top hinge pin screw as well as the bottom hinge pin screw. In order to release the steering hub from the suspension arms along with half of the telescopic drive shaft. With the hub removed we next need to remove the hex adapter. If necessary use a flat blade screwdriver to carefully pry the wheel hex away from the cross pin. We can then remove the cross pin and slide the stub axle out of the steering hub completely. Finally remove any bearings left within the hub. We receive two sets of bearings in the steel drive shaft package. The smaller of the two can be pushed into the outer side of the hub, while the larger bearing slides into the opposite side, which saves having to remove the C hub from the steering block completely. It's a snug fit, but should sit flush. Now we can insert the steel CV drive shaft stub axle, which comes pre built into the steering block. This also fits flush into the hub. With the axle prepared we now need to install the supplied steel drive cup into the truck chassis. To do that we need to first remove the male drive shaft half by removing the screw pin that secures the universal joint. It's a little easier with a ball end 2mm driver instead of a straight tip driver, but as we can see it's still doable. After removing the screw pin simply slide the universal joint off of the shaft. Next install the drive cup included with the CV drive shafts by pushing it into place and be sure to use the new screw pins supplied with the CV shafts. The new pins already have a patch of blue thread locking compound on them to prevent loosening. However I found it far too tight to get the pin into place. It's probably doable with some persistence but I caved in and decided to stop taking shortcuts by releasing the lower suspension arms. So that meant all 8 screws to remove the centre skid plate, the one bumper screw between the shock tower up top, and the 4 screws beneath the front skid plate in order to remove the bumper and gain access to the suspension hinge screw, which can be removed to finally release the lower suspension arm. With that out of the way, installation of the CV drive shaft is super simple. And since we are here we'll go ahead and remove the opposite side too, and insert the new cup here as well so it's ready for the dog bone and axle, securing tightly into place. With the hard part done, go ahead and reinstall the front end, so reseat suspension arms, secure into place before installing the front bumper, four screws below and one up top. Ok so now we are ready to reseat our removed steering block, taking care to line up and insert the dog bone into the drive cup we just installed. And once in place we insert and tighten the two hinge pin screws holding the hub securely in place with the suspension arms as well as a final screw attaching the steering linkage to the steering block too. And with that said, one corner of the vehicle is complete with its newly installed steel CV drive shaft. The process for the other side is exactly the same, although we already have one half in place making it even easier. 
So all we have is the single steering linkage screw, the two hinge pin screws securing the steering block to the suspension arms, freeing the steering block and half the original drive shaft. Then we remove the stubborn hex adapter, the cross pin, as well as the old axle and bearings, before inserting the new smaller bearing, with the larger bearing into the opposite side, and the new axle into the steering block. That just leaves us with inserting the dog bone into the cup and the steering block into the suspension arms. And securing by inserting the two hinge pin screws, and finally the steering linkage. And that's the front end complete. Now onto the back, which is slightly easier since we have no steering linkage here. Again, I'm going to start by removing the single screw up top and the four down below in order to remove the rear bumper and the hinge pin retainer in order to release the lower suspension arms. Now we can remove that difficult to reach pin on the drive shaft in order to remove this end completely and giving us plenty of space to install the new cup nice and securely before repeating on the opposite side. With those done we can reseat the suspension arms, secure into place and reinstall the rear bumper with its four screws below and one up top. That just leaves us with our axle ends. So it's just the two hinge pin screws after which the axle carrier is released and again we remove the hex adapter and the cross pin along with the bearings before inserting the new bearings, inserting into the axle carrier, and with the drive cup already installed, we can insert the dog bone and axle carrier back into place, securing with the two hinge pin screws. Done. With one corner left, let's repeat. Hinge pin screws, hex adapter, bearings, insert new bearings to both sides of the axle carrier before finally inserting the metal axle into the carrier. Now we can insert the dog bone and axle carrier into place and secure with the two hinge pins previously removed. Steel CVD axle carriers installed and job done. Well, almost. We can't reuse the stock hex adapters now so we need to install these extra parts we mentioned earlier, namely the wheel hub and nut. To install, simply insert the wheel hub over the axle carrier and insert the cross pin, ensuring it sits flush before inserting a set screw to hold it in place. You'll find it easier to use a 17mm hex wrench to hold the hex and pin in place while you crank down. Finally, install the wheel and secure it into place using the new hex nut, for which you'll also need the 17mm hex wrench. I'm using the one from an X Max in this example. Repeat on all four corners and with all the wheels installed, all we have left is to reinstall the centre chassis skid plate underneath the truck with its eight screws. And finally we're done. Wide Max kit installed along with the steel CV drive shafts which should make the suspension setup seriously rugged. And above all else we get rid of those annoying plastic washers when installing the wheels too. 